Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this very first OBS tutorial video. Actually, this will be an intro tutorial on how to use OBS. So we're going to go over the basics on how to uh, use OBS, know what the layout is, know what the uh, settings are, know what how, how to use like certain buttons, how to add certain scenes, add certain sources. So I'll try to keep this video under 15 minutes, but I'll try to explain as quick as possible, but to uh, actually uh, help you understand like how the layout works. So uh, the first thing we need to click on is preview stream. This will be a little button down here just above exit. This will basically show like a preview video, a video a frame on what you'll see in the stream or what you want to put in the stream. So uh, the uh, first thing we want to talk about is the bottom left corner here. This is basically scenes. Now this is where you'll actually add sources to each scene. So let's say we rename this scene as the main stream. All you do is uh, basically right click and then just uh, rename pretty much. And then we do the same thing for this one. We can rename this as like the be right back screen if we wanted to. So as you can see in the main stream, it fades in and out every time we switch a scene. And then basically all we do when we add sources, we just right click add and then we can either add a window capture, a monitor capture, an image, an image slideshow. Uh, we can add global sources. So for example, if you set like a camera or send like a game or something, you can add as a global source, which is the main source of the whole stream. Uh, you can add text, uh, CLL browser. Now this is another uh, tutorial video I'll explain later. This is how you get Twitch alerts to work with OBS or or actually using uh, Night Dev or uh, yeah, so either Twitch alerts or Night Dev, you can uh, use a CLL browser for that. But that's another tutorial video later on. I'll explain that. Uh, Direct sh Show Audio Source, that's another plugin. Again, I won't go over that because that's just a uh, plugin I just installed. Uh, video Capture Device and Game Capture Device. So again, once again, the video capture device is if you want to use a capture card uh, for like um, Live Gamer Portable to Elgato uh, using the Blackmagic Intensity Pro, you can definitely use this. Uh, game capture, uh, that's if you want to capture your PC games. Or, or you can use it to uh, capture like, um, like Windows uh, for like Curse, if you have Curse Voice or Skype, uh, you can use that as well. Uh, you can change the order to move the sources up and down, but I know the key sh keyboard shortcuts for those. Uh, position and size, again, I'll explain that a little bit later in edit scene. You can remove and rename uh, each uh, source. And you can click on properties to change the window, the monitor capture, all that stuff. Um, but I will explain that a little bit later. So the way to move uh, a, a source down or up and down, um, for example, I have Facebook text. Let's say if I want to move that up and down. You press and hold control and up. You can move the sources up and down in which order. As you can see, the logo disappears below the banner. I want to put it above the banner, so that's what it looks like when I put it above. So that's basically learning how to use the how to control the sources or where you want to put it into the OBS screen so you can move it up and down. So that's how you move the sources. Uh, that's uh, so I taught you how to add the sources. Now, <clears throat> so let's let's for example let's uh, capture a window. Let's capture. Let's see. Let's go right click. Go to properties. Let's do. Uh, let's capture this window. Let's capture my X split. Uh, basically, we want inner window. Uh, anything inside. Now the entire window. That's more for like videos maybe or something like a website if you want to use. Um, I just usually just use inner window. I just don't use entire window. You can capture the mouse cursor if you want. You can have that checked. Uh, you don't have to actually capture the mouse cursor. Like sometimes you don't have to, or sometimes you do. But it's up to you if you want to use it. Uh, you can use uh, capture later windows. Again, that's uh, uh, I think that's for like uh, if you want to capture like certain like uh, like certain websites. I believe uh, have that. You can capture that. Uh, compatibility mode. I usually don't check those anyways. Uh, leave the gamma, use point filtering alone, I never touch those. Uh, the subregion, now you can use the subregion to select the region within XSplit. So let me actually bring this over here and bring bring this, oh never mind. Okay so basically 
to select the region, uh, basically this little screen will come up and it will show you the entire window of the sub-region uh, right here. Now you can click and drag uh, to see how big you want it. Um, you can go up and down, you can use the uh, little scrolly scroll bars and you can go like that and all you have to do is just press enter and then just basically once that's in uh, you press OK and then in this uh, window there's a little uh, window capture now as you can see it's a little bit off screen so we have to edit scene and we click and drag this up and then basically increase the window size now it's gonna be a little bit funky <laughs> as the way the uh, window capture is but now we could stretch this uh, we could stretch this to window so we go to edit properties uh, let's see here we could we can somehow edit this. That all depends on how we, uh, oh, position and size. We can fit the screen. So that's basically what it looks like. It'll fit the whole window. Uh, if we want to move it down below the banner, we just press and hold control. And basically the banner will be on top. So we can double check that. So as you can see, the window captures below the banner. So that's where I wanted to be. And we click edit scene. And basically this is where the window capture is and you can if you want to edit you can move the scene around if you want to yeah it looks kind of funky on there <laughs> so um, and we just and once we're done editing we just click edit scene and basically you're all set now to delete this all you have to do is just right click and just remove now you can also just highlight this and just basically press the delete key on your keyboard and this is how you should want to delete the selected items and you just click yes and basically it just deletes the whole scene so <clears throat> so now we got that uh, basically how to edit scenes delete scenes or delete sources um, so the next thing uh, I want to talk about is the settings now the settings uh, this is where it gets really um, now this is where I have to really explain um, so this will be like the last part of this introduction video on using OBS. Uh, basically, I'm going to describe what the settings do. Uh, so under general settings, uh, you select the English uh, setting profiles already streamed. Now you can set this profile to anything you want in the first time when you launch OBS. Um, you can uh, check notification area icons. So you can uh, so basically, if you start uh, using OBS uh, and if, say if it's minimized, you can just uh, use in the bottom right corner. You could. Uh, uh, see if it's live streaming or not. Uh, minimize the notification area. Again, that's if you minimize it, you could. Uh, enable cursor over projector, you could. You could check that. Show link a wall, wind, uh, log window on OBS launch. So, if it, for example, if you see, uh, like, say if OBS crashes and you want to figure out, like, how it crashed, uh, basically you could show the log when OBS is first launched. And you could tell, like, oh, okay, so this is basically where. OBS was all crashed. Okay, so I'll basically fix that. You can also send the bug report to OBS website. And uh, by the way, I'll put a, a description. Uh, I'll put a link in the description where you can download OBS. Um, so the next uh, tab would be the encoding. Uh, video encoding will be uh, X264. Uh, I usually enable CBR and CBR padding. I use custom buffer size uh, to I use a max bit rate 3000 and buffer size to 3000. Now this all depends on your internet connection. Um, I have at least five to six upload speeds so I kind of want to cut it to half of my upload speed to uh, accommodate for upload speed and basically uh, have like network connections for example if I play Minecraft or some other server you could uh, you can uh, you need to uh, have some upload speed left to do that so you want to save half of your upload speed for streaming and then half uh, for like any network connection so I just set mine to th max bitrate at 3000 uh, the minimum bitrate to stream at high definition is at least 2000 kilobytes per second for max bitrate you need at least 2000 to stream HD uh, but mine's set to 3000 which is fine um, audio encoding uh, pretty much you can use the AAC codec uh, they also have MP3. MP3 is a little bit better, but I prefer to use AEC just for streaming purposes. Um, MP3, MP3s take some uh, upload speed, so you got to be careful with that. So I just use regular AEC for that. Uh, the bit rate will be 96. Again, this will go towards your um, max bit rate, by the way. So 
I'm actually uploading 3096 uh, max bitrate and my max buffer size will be 3096 so that's how we add the totals together so you want to add the video encoding and the audio coding bit rates together so I'm actually uploading at least 3096 kilobytes per second so the format I just leave it at 48,000 kilohertz and the channel is stereo you could set it to mono if you want but to be honest it's the stereo age we always put the stereo so and once you're done with everything, you, done with everything you click apply and you go to the next tab which is broadcast settings uh, the mode you want to put it on is live stream now you could file I'll put your videos for example this uh, program actually uh, records local videos so if you want to make a tutorial video or uh, pretty much anything like tutorial videos or just capture like any of your games like let's play and stuff this program will do it for you um, but you want to set it to file output only if you do but we're gonna set it to live stream uh, streaming service you want to set it to twitch um, it also has Vaughn Live, it has instagig.tv, goodgame.ru, uh, dailymotion, youtube, cybergaming, cybergame.tv, hitbox.tv, connectcast.tv, and azubu.tv. So if you want to use any of those services, you're more welcome to use. Uh, I set it to Twitch. Um, hold on one sec. Uh, no, I don't want to save changes. I accidentally uh, uh, got rid of my stream key, which is blank. Um, uh, the FMS URL, this is the server that you need to connect to. Now, since I live in, uh, basically, since I live in the east, uh, my closest server is New York, so I would click the New York server. And basically, uh, I set the stream key. Now, you'll find the stream key on your Twitch website. Uh, you have to go to your, uh, you have to log in, make sure you register on Twitch. Uh, basically, the stream key is located on your dashboard. So basically, on the left-hand side, there should be like a dashboard link. Uh, you'll find it there, click on the dashboard, and then somewhere above the dashboard there should be uh, a title called Stream Key. Once you click on that, you need to go to that page and basically show key, and basically you have to copy and paste that key into this. So that's how you will connect to your Twitch. And I check auto reconnect, so if basically if OBS shuts down, I basically will auto reconnect all the time if it goes down. Uh, auto reconnect timeout, that's like 10 seconds. And basically, if you want to set your file output settings, you can set it to file path and replay buffer size. Again, you can browse whatever file you want to wish to save your videos in. Uh, do you want to apply and save changes? Uh, nope. Uh, let's see. Uh, video adapter. Uh, basically, that's my graphics card. Uh, I would set it to your graphics card for your video adapter. Now, base resolution. Now, this is where I set my uh, stream settings to. Now, my base resolution is 1280 by 720 at 16 by 9. The reason why it's 16 by 9 is so I can actually fill the black bars out. So I, I won't have like black bars on top and bottom and stuff like that. So I set the custom resolution to 1280 by 720. Uh, so I basically uploaded 720p pretty much. And that's why I need 3000 uh, kilobytes a second for video to upload. So that's why I need at least 2000 kilobytes to stream at 720p quality. Uh, so resolution downscale, I set it to none, so it's just regular 1280 by 720, and I set the FPS to 30 frames per second down here. Now, if you have a good machine, you could stream at 60 frames per second, but I highly re not recommend to do so unless you have a really good CPU and some RAM and a great graphics card because it's it's going to take a lot of your CPU uses mostly. Um, so I highly just recommend to stream at 30 frames per second. Now the next thing uh, is basically the audio settings. Uh, my desktop audio device will be speakers. Uh, pretty much uh, anything that comes out of my speakers, basically the stream will catch it. So if, for example, if I stream like uh, video game consoles to, or stream like uh, PC, basically that will basically pick up the audio settings. So speakers will be that. Um, the next option will be the microphone. This will be your default microphone. Now since I'm using my blue snowball mic as my microphone basically I will use it as that now you can set it to any microphone you want uh, for example if you want to set it to a webcam or set it to your astro mic headset mic or a professional mic uh, you basically you'll just select it in this drop down menu so since I'm using blue snowball I use that uh, I leave all the other stuff alone uh, pretty much I don't touch any of this um, you can use the push to talk if you want uh, you can do uh, desktop boost, uh, mic aux boost, mic sig offset. Again, I just don't change any of that stuff. I just leave that stuff alone. Uh, the next tab, uh, again, this is where the hotkeys are. This is where you do the push to talk for the audio for the microphone. 
Again, if you want to use it, that's fine, uh, but most likely nobody uses this. But if you want to, you could. Uh, you could set it to use the push to talk, and you can do push to talk to push to talk to, and mute your mic and stuff like that. Broadcast, same thing. You could start, stop streams, start, stop, uh, start recording, stop recording, replay buffers, and stuff like that. It's all right there for you. Now, in the advanced tab, this is where it gets really important. Um, you want to use multi-thread opt optimizations. Uh, multi-threading is basically using multiple cores uh, to stream, which I want to. Uh, basically, this will help keep my video buffering and stuff like that, so it doesn't like go overboard and stuff like that. It doesn't lag all the time. So, and this is where you have to set your process priority class. I set it to high. The only reason why I set it to high is because um, I want to make sure that my processing uh, priority is on streaming. So I want to, to make sure my processor focuses on OBS when it's streaming. So I set it to high. Um, my scene buffering time is 700 milliseconds, and I allow other modifiers to hotkeys. Now the video, okay, the X264 CPU preset, uh, I set it to very fast, only because I'm not too comfortable streaming at like, uh, for example, fast, medium, slow, or slower. Only because is because um, uh, basically, if you have a beast machine like a beast CPU, I highly recommend to go either fast or medium. Maybe slow if you have a really, really good CPU. Like an overclocked CPU would do fine with these, but the default setting should be very fast. You shouldn't change this at all, by the way. Um, encoding profile should be still main, but the keyframe interval you need to change. Uh, I usually just set it to two seconds. So for example, if I play FPS games or or mostly just FPS games or high like intense games, like fast, fast motion pace games, uh, you want to set the keyframe interval to two seconds. Um, if you play action adventure games and set it to two key, uh, two seconds for keyframe interval, that is fine. I just set it to two, so just for just in case I play like high fast motion games, I want to set it to that. And so basically, the FPS or high motion games won't lag as much. Uh, I use CFR. I check that, and pretty much everything is all set. I don't change anything else. And I go to quick, uh, the QuickSync encoder. You pretty much don't have to change either, any of this. Browser, this is where you can change like general one time instant CSS and templates for OBS. But again, I don't touch any of this. And microphone noise gate, if you want noise gate, if you want to use this, uh, you could check it and basically test the thresholds on your microphone. Uh, you don't have to use this at all if you don't want to. Uh, that's up to you. Uh, I don't ever use it, so most likely everybody can hear me perfectly fine on microphone. So that is basically the settings for OBS. Uh, I hope this makes a little bit more sense. Uh, let me start the preview now. The, basically, to start the stream, you just click Start Streaming right here. If you want to start recording, basically you start recording here. Uh, you can start replay buffers and recording and replay buffers if you want in the drop down. Um, and basically the global sources, again, you can add, remove, uh, rename any global sources. So for example, if you add a cam, capture card, browser, anything, basically the global sources will basically uh, be put here. So for example, if you add new scenes, uh, you can quickly go to your global sources and add it quickly. Uh, instead of like right-clicking the source and then add the source and then blah, blah, blah. So the global sources will be there and you can add it to the scene quickly. So that'll be very useful. And the plugins... Uh, basically, this is where you'll that will have all the plugins shown here. Now, in the next tutorial, I'll be describing uh, I'll be describing how to use the CLR browser plugin. This is basically will uh, uh, show like Twitch alerts, uh, for example, if you want donation alerts, uh, subscription alerts, follow alerts, and hosting alerts uh, for Twitch alerts. You can uh, use the CLR browser plugin. Uh, again, that will be in another tutorial video. This basically will show only the basics of using OBS. So thank you all for watching. Uh, I hope to see you guys in the next video, which will be the CL Browser plugin video. We'll catch you all later.